So whilst I still have this dusty old rust bucket here in the fitting rooms part of my shop, I figured it's a good time to build the old school sunwiser that I've always wanted to fit. Coming right up. Hey, how's it, Jokes, and welcome back to the shop. If you don't know me, my name is Diff, as in difficult, except I'm not. And I play with old cars and old school things and steel and rust down here in South Africa. So in the previous video, some of you guys might have seen it, I built my canvas canopy. I've since taken it off again because I needed to weld that frame fully and I'll fit it back one of these days. But for now, I would like to focus and build the steel sun riser. Now I'd like to do this as simple as possible, no fancy tools required, no fancy shapes, and as quickly as possible, because our fly trap here needs to go to a car show on Sunday, and that's just a few days away, so I'd like to get this done before she goes down there. So let's get into it. So my idea is to make this whole thing out of one piece of sheet metal, and a big piece of stiff cardboard is my best friend here. Because I can now snip it and shape it and yeah, see what it's going to look like. It's what our friend Ian Roussel would call an envisioning tool. Good term. So this will give me the opportunity to decide on my angle and I can fine tune it here for fitting nicely. It's currently oversized because I can now see where I need to cut it down in the bottom. And the same here up in the top. So I'm just messing around with this a little bit. And once I'm happy with the final shape, I can transfer this to sheet metal, cut it out and take it from there. So I need to decide where I'm going to cut this now. And I do feel it needs to be parallel to that bottom body line. So if I just use this stick and I can make a mark here, let's say there. And now I can just kind of transfer that mark all along. Something to that effect. That's going to give me a line that is parallel to that bottom line. So what I can do is I can take, you see I've got two pieces. So I'm going to cut only the one to shape and then when I'm happy with that, I can just use this one and transfer it onto the other piece. Then I know they are symmetrical and the same, and then clamp the whole thing back together again. To have a look at it. So, uh, I don't know, this line might be... Maybe a little bit too far down. I need to go sit inside the truck and see what it looks like. <laughs> Maybe I must just cut this down first and then we take it from there. So for this upper line along the roof, I've taped my marker to the stick. And I'm just going to kind of mark it like this. I can keep the stick on the flat of the roof and draw a line like this, which would be my approximate cut line for the upper part of my sun visor. So let's take this half off, cut it, and we can then put it back into place to see what it looks like. Okay, clamped back into place, and as you can see right there, if I can just zoom in, I've also created some reference lines. That way I can clamp it back the way I had it before. It's starting to look better. The top line is parallel to the roof, but I think it can actually drop down more by maybe an inch or two. So I will cut that back down, parallel to this line. Bottom line, it's roughly parallel to the body line here now still very really low maybe I must just get inside and see what it what the view is like 
Mm. All right, let's see. Get my sorry ass in here. Yeah, it's, uh, let me put it this way. <laughs> if you're sitting behind that big truck, you will not be able to read the sign on the back. I can see, but maybe I should just raise it a little bit more. Maybe an inch or so. Okay, so I've snipped it a little bit more here and there, and I think I'm kind of happy with it now. Now, of course, it's much easier to mess with cardboard um, than it would be with steel, ah, and much cheaper as well. Eh? <laughs> I mean, if you cut too much, it's no big deal to just uh, use a new piece of cardboard and try again. Um, right, so now my plan is to take this piece off and that piece, transfer this shape onto that one, and then cut that out and then I've got to do symmetrical pieces and we can clamp them back together again and get the overall feel for it and the look of it before we do it in sheet metal. So let's trace my newly established shape onto the other one. Now I tell you, if you haven't got a set of these spring clamps, do yourself a favor and invest in a few of them. Best pair of helping hands you can get. And they don't talk back. And they don't want a wage. <laughs> okay, like a man, I got my two pieces taped together and clamped in place. And I think it can work for me. Yes, I think that looks pretty sweet. So normally many of these old school sunrises swing in more along that line. But I kind of like this droopy look. It's just something a little bit different and I like the feel of it and the look of it. So I think I'm going to go for that. And besides, remember we can do final fine tuning when we've got the final fine piece finely fitted. How's that for a sentence? <laughs> so I can now remove my envisioning tool. Thank you Ian Roussel for the term. And hello lovely Jamie. I always enjoy your giggles and convert it into steel. Let's do it. Well then, the shape certainly looks a little bit different now that it's lying flat, eh? And my uh, spring clamps at work again. Yeah, like most things around here, a little rusty and old, <laughs> but still good at doing their job. I actually bought this in the US that must have been, ooh, about 25 years ago. I was spent some time there for about a year doing work. And um, I specifically didn't want to buy the plastic ones. They would have been long dead. So if you can find metal ones, it's an investment for a long time. And luckily, my piece of steel is big enough, long enough. I thought I was going to have to join two pieces, which would not have been a big deal. So I'm just going to mark this and then I can cut it out and then we can take it from there. So at this stage I'm not too worried about the accuracy of these cuts. I can fine tune them once I'm doing my test fit. But now we first got to tackle what I think is the most difficult part of this whole story and that is to get this bend here. I'm talking about this bend that we need right here. You can see I've drawn a line here. It shows me the approximate position of the bend and the orientation as well. So I can mark that line here on my workpiece so that I know where to make my bend. So we can just transfer this line onto the steel. To make this bend or curve, whatever you want to call it, if you have a pipe vise, that can work very well. 
or just a piece of pipe and you can bend it around that this is four inch pipe I think that'll be fine I'm lucky though I've got this little slip roller that I built many years ago so I'm going to use that to get my curve in place Yeah, I don't know, maybe luck is not the right word. I mean, I did put in the blood, sweat and tears to have the little machine in my life. And with a bit of persistence, you can too. <laughs> I use my bevel gauge to get the two angles about the same on each side because it's not a 90 degree bend. So now we can go see how it fits. If it fits. <laughs> Why would you look at that? It kind of fits. <laughs> and there's this rare warm front spell or something for the first time in I don't know how many months I can take off my sweater. Life is good. <laughs> I see it's got a bit of a curve through though. These lines are supposed to be straight. It does need a little bit of a bend in the middle there. So I'm just going to do that, take it off, get that in and then we try again. A little kick here, a little bend. No, it's probably too much, I don't know. We want a straight line there and there. Let's go check it out again. Oh yes, now we're getting somewhere. I don't think I bent it too much. Starting to look like something. It's a bit of a strange business going on up there, but that's easy to trim away. So now at this point is where you light up a smoke or open a beer or make a coffee or whatever is your poison. So you can step, step back and evaluate everything a little bit. Make a call on your final shapes. Like I say, we can still trim it top and bottom a little bit. Decide if your curves are okay and all the rest of it. It's also still quite floppy, so I'm going to trim it top and bottom or stiffen it top and bottom with some round bar. Might even add a bracket in the front middle here, that will stiffen it up a hell of a lot. I don't know, we'll see. And then we've got to figure out a way as well to attach it to the drip rails. Another small little challenge to overcome. <laughs> Ignore all the crap in the back and you can see that this line is a little bit wonky. You need to sort that out. Now the eye is pretty good at picking up a fair curve. I observed my first fascinating curve over 62 years ago when I was born and I've studied sweet curves since then. <laughs> so I've had good practice. Yeah, so I decided to make a center support bracket and it looks like something that belongs in a Star Wars movie or something. <laughs> Um, I don't think it's actually necessary under normal circumstances but I do drive this whole truck quite hard on the bumpy dirt roads around here and I don't want to have to deal with another vibration or a rattle and in my case it's also easy I have no wood liner so simple matter to bolt it right through the roof to attach it and it's yeah it's strong enough I reckon you know, after many years of doing restorations with my dad and then building shiny street rods, do you know how much fun it is not to have to worry about scratching paintwork and shiny things? <laughs> I love these rat rods. I'm telling you, shiny paint just causes stress, man. I drilled and tapped into that bracket I made and now that it's screwed on here in the model, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's still a little bit floppy here and there but my round bar edging will sort that out right so now I'm gonna attach it here I suppose in the most rad roddy way <laughs> you can just weld it on but that's a bit crude you could stick uh, self tappers into the a pillar but also also still a little crude so I think we must come up with something that's a little bit more refined so here's the best plan I can come up with. I've made up this little L bracket 
from a two millimeter thick plate. I have no idea what that in gauge is, but Google will tell you. Google knows everything. <laughs> now my plan is to now actually fasten it like that with a little fastener. And then it will clamp it and hold it, hopefully. Well, I can't get a nut in from behind, so for now I'm just going to tap this Oh, I know that metal is not thick enough for a thread, but this will do just for now. When I take it off again, I'm planning to spot weld a nut on from behind or a thicker bit of plate. We'll see. But for now, this should do, just to check it out. Now my little bracket can go like this. And we can put this bolt in like that. Yep, that's not going anywhere. It's going to work well. Now, uh, this line here, I'm actually thinking of cutting it back even more up here. Still playing with my lines and <laughs> what I like the most, but to be safe. I've moved my bracket this away. Right! <laughs> Apart from that vibration, which I will be sorting out with the round by edging, this thing can't move anymore. So I can now refine all my lines and cut them before welding on my round by edging. So uh, I would actually like to have this line parallel to this bottom body line. So I've made this stick and what I can do now is to just mark it along the top here like this and then I can cut it to that line and then we will be good yes. So I'm going to do that both sides. I still need to refine my top line as well. Take it off, cut it, and then we can weld on that round bar and do a f hopefully a final fitment. So once you've made your cut, it works well to lower your eye and look along the edge of the curve as I'm trying to show you here. And that way you can pick up the spots that's not quite fair, like for instance right here. And I can just take my flap discs and work that out. You can see it here as well, not a sweet line. So a gentle approach with the flap disc is just the picker. I made a start on fitting my round bar edge here. It's a six millimeter quarter inch round bar. But this is as far as I got, because then the power went out and I couldn't do any further welding. Much, much, much later. Well then, as you can see, things have changed a little bit, yeah. The power only came back on now. Two days it was off. Apparently some main feeder line that crosses a deep valley blew down in a storm and I was struggling to get it back up. So I do have a backup system here in the shop to run my lights and maybe a grinder. But yeah, I can't do any welding, there's not enough power for that. So I've been spending these two days, as you can see, giving old flight wrap a bit of makeup here, cleaning the shop and boring stuff like that. So the makeup I'm referring to 
<laughs> it's just a wipe down with some thin boiled linseed oil. It makes quite a difference, don't you think? It's actually really easy. I didn't even wash it. I just blew off the worst of the dust, gave it a wipe down. I'll stick a link up here on the screen and you can go check out about a video out where I talked more about using boiled linseed oil to preserve patina. But now the thing is, uh, she's committed to go to a car show tomorrow. So I'm not going to get my sun visor finished in time. Um, so what we're going to have to do is, I'm going to go do the car show. I'll do a video about that as well that I'll post down the line. And then on the day after the car show, I will come and finish the sun visor. We can fit it and see how it turns out. Hey, and check it out. I finally got my fly trap t-shirt as well. Awesome artwork by Stefan's Auto Art. Thanks, my brother. So if you would like your own fly trap t-shirt, check out the merch shop below the video. And you can order it there. For my mates in South Africa, your easiest option is to drop me an email. I'll stick a link up here on the screen. And then I can sort you out. Um... Yes, for you guys that is overseas from here in other parts of the world, for me to ship t-shirts from here to you is extremely expensive, so it's just not worth it. Your easiest option, like I said, check out the merch shop. You can also find all sorts of cool stickers and other t-shirts there and get your own flight trap t-shirt. Cool, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> hey, and check out these cool stickers. They are also available in the merch shop. Yes, we are busy working on a bunch of exciting new designs. So when they become available, I'll let you know. As you can see, they are die cut. So that looks quite nice. And I think this one is quite appropriate on flytrap. <laughs> yeah, and this one is also appropriate. Sorry if I offend anybody, but that's my thoughts on the matter. Two days later. Well, back from the car show, which was good fun. Let's do some work and get the sun riser done. So I'm using my special little custom clamps again to line up the round bar with the edge of the sheet metal. Now I've shown how they work in previous videos, but in case you haven't seen it, let me quickly show you the sketch again to explain how they do the job because they really do work very well. So this is what we have, there is your round bar, there is your sheet metal and there is the clamp that you make. I make this from a piece of quarter inch 6mm flat bar, whatever you have and can find. You drill a hole the same size or diameter as your round bar, then you cut it to the shape as you see, slot it like this. Up here this is a little piece of flat bar welded on 90 degrees. To the clamp you've made and now you can clamp your contraption <laughs> to the sheet metal to hold things in place if you tap it from here with a little hammer it will move the round bar until it touches nicely against your sheet metal and this is going to ensure that everything lines up and you'll get consistent results when you edge your sheet metal with the round bar I've made marks every one inch because I like it if my spot wells are nice and equally spaced. So I clamp on my little jig thing with a G clamp or C clamp and then I just slightly tap it so that it just pushes and everything uh, comes together very nicely. Now it's nicely nice and tight against the, uh, the sheet metal. I can now spot weld it here and once these are done I move it up and I keep working my way along. My little jig is tightly clamped with the sheet metal and I have a careful look here and you should be able to see how the line bar moves into place when I tap here. Okay. 
Hopefully you saw that. Now it's perfectly lined up and I can spot weld it or pack weld it. What's the right word? Okay, like I mean, this side is done. I did it in two halves, so there's a joint in the middle. That just makes it easier. I have to work with such a long piece. So now I'm going to repeat that whole process here on the other side. I got my 6mm round bar welded on both sides now. Spent some time with the flap disc to clean it up nicely. And I tell you, now it's so stiff it doesn't move at all. Now we could take this further and sand it up with a DA, with P80 sandpaper or something like that. But hey man, this is just a rat rot. So we're not going to take it that far. So I think we are almost ready to go and give this thing a try. Remember earlier I said I needed to do something here on the inside of the sun visor for the bracket bolts to get a bit of extra thread to hold the visor to the car. So I just uh, Back welded on these bits of uh, three millimeter plate, one eight, and I tapped them. So now I've got a little bit more meat, if I can put it like that, for my little bolts. So that should be plenty fine, and more than enough to hold it in place. If you are fussy, you can probably weld it here on the inside as well. But as you can see, I've got pretty good penetration, so I'm not going to stress about that. Um, when I do tack welds like this, I crank the amps up quite high. Um, I think it was probably about the same setting that I would use for quarter inch 6mm plate. Um, so I get instant penetration. And remember, you're only tacking so you can actually stand all that heat, plus you've got the six millimeter round bar that helps to absorb it as well so that's good enough for me well then let's go and see if it will still fit some pushing and squeezing required no doubt there was a bit of distortion from the welding but it's going on I'm going to need some washes to put here. So an oversized washer like this one here, that will be perfect. But I don't have enough of them. Mesco Engineering Supplies is a long way from here now. And I'd like to get this done. So I've got an idea in my head that might get me arrested. <laughs> This is my dirty finger, and these are South African 10 cent coins. They are worth so little that they are not even made of solid copper, because the value of the metal would far exceed the face value of the coin. Instead, they are copper plated steel. There is nothing you can buy with one of these, so they really are worthless, and I don't know why we still have them. I would imagine the production cost of one of these would far exceed the value of the coin. To put it into perspective, in American dollar terms, one of these is worth 0 0.56 American cents. So this little washer, to buy this little washer, will take at least 5 of those, depending on where you buy them, 50 cents. And funny enough, they happen to be the same size. <laughs> so you are probably thinking, well, I'm thinking, if I'm not here next week, some agents from the Reserve Bank came and fetched me. Will someone please come and bail me out then? So by just drilling some holes, I could now make five of these for the price of one of these. <laughs> please don't tell anybody. There we go, I got myself some fine copper plated washers. 
and I think I just need to add a little salt water, then I've probably made a little battery here. <laughs> So for attaching my sun visor, I was going to use these brackets, but now I've done something that my wife does very often. I've changed my mind. I decided to do this instead. I think it looks a lot better than two or three of those L brackets. I bent up an L shaped section of sheet metal and then I spent some time here in my stretcher to get a matching curve into it. Yeah, I think I've now made a much more elegant <laughs> clamping bracket. Not that there's anything wrong with the functionality of those L-shaped ones, but yeah, this is just a little bit more refined. Yes, and that clamps it on really well. I mean, it's not moving at all. But listen, if you don't have a stretcher, don't stress. Those L-shaped brackets that I showed earlier, they will do a fine job too. Okay, like a man. We've got ourselves a sunriser, and I think it turned out pretty nice. Oh, by the way, if you're new here, lekker is a South African slang word for cool or great or nice. Lekker, man. <laughs> it's too shiny, though. Doesn't blend in with the rest of the truck. I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm giving this the instant rust treatment so that it can blend in with the rest of old fly trap. Because after all, in rust, we trust. If you are interested in the recipe that I'm using here to create my instant rust, check out the link on the screen right there. Thanks for hanging out with me. I enjoyed your company. I'll see you in the next video. And then I'll give you some further feedback on this. And let this stew for a day or two. And we'll put it back to the truck. Until then. Have a lucky one, my brothers and sisters. Whatever makes you happy, it just depends on you. So think of.